Welcome everybody to my channel, Kathy Arbor here, and today we're going to be talking about sketchbook art journals and giving you a few ideas that I've done in my um, sketchbook and art journals. Now, what do you consider the difference between an art journal and a sketchbook? Some people mm -mm, treat them the same way. Do you think there is a uh, difference between the two? If you do, leave a comment down below. I'd like to know what your view is. Hey Tori, good to see you. So I've got a few uh, of my own journals to show you, sketchbooks, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I'll show you a few things that I've done and like any artist, we're always growing with new ideas, new techniques, um, experimenting in something uh, different that we haven't worked with, maybe a new medium, um, maybe a new style. You're always growing with whatever you're doing. Hi Ashley. Good to see you. So, I, I've been watching quite a few different uh, channels and they've been talking about uh, their sketchbooks and um, what they consider to be a sketchbook. Myself, I don't think there's really a big difference. I believe anything that's put into a book form, such as this, or... Um, this it's a place to do your own experiments uh, processes of, of uh, a technique uh, ideas thoughts whatever and it can also have both writing or just art in it or diagrams uh, swatches uh, now when I went to art school we had to have a sketchbook um, done every month. So we had to work in it, in it every week, every day, and fill that sketchbook for that month. And with art school, it's a little bit different because you're also putting in uh, the things that you've learned that day, something that was taught, a technique, or maybe you saw something either on um, somebody's channel or a video, a movie. Uh, it comes from all areas of life, your ideas. So it went into my sketchbook and also swatches. If I was also in textiles um, patterns and um, um, portraiture and photography and it involved everything so it was like a one common place to put all the stuff so I think uh, later on you kind of put a little bit of a uh, separation between certain things like maybe you only want painting in one type of book maybe you only want drawing in one other book or maybe you're going to divide it by what type of paper is in that book. So it's interesting to see the perspective on each different artist and what they view as a sketchbook versus a journal book. Um, I try different things in my sketchbook. Sometimes I journal in it. Sometimes it's got to grow. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a go-to place, common place, common book. Uh, instead of, ha uh, for me, everybody's different. So maybe you like to category, categorize, um, your art process. So maybe you want just ideas in one book, uh, paint in another, uh, writing about it in something else, swatches in another. Um, and that's fine. Uh, it's whatever you feel comfortable with is the way I think you should approach your sketch 
book slash art journal. That's what I, basically I'm going to say. It's, it's whatever you want to name it. Um, so I, I thought I'd show you a few of my things and talk about the different things that I've done in it. Um, right now, though, I do want to show you, I did get my uh, happy mail from Janet. Thank you. Oop. Thank you, Janet. That was dumb. Um, did you put washi tape or um, painter's tape on top? I'm just wondering if they opened it and then that's what they did to close it. I'm not sure. Um, Joan has asked me to thank you for all the good wishes yesterday. Oh, Joan, was Joan sick? I didn't see that. Uh, yeah, feel free, Dorothy. And by the way, hi. No, the post office had to do that. I would do something pretty. Oh, weird, eh? So they opened that. Jeez. I guess they thought you I was smuggling something, or you were smuggling something to me. So... Thank you very much. I love them. Um, these are the from the swap at uh, Janet's, and she's in the chat here, Janet M. Young, if you want to go check out her channel. And I love these. You guys are so talented. And I'm going to... Uh, talent to me is when you work and work at something to perfect it. That to me is talent. Um, just the fact that you've progressed with it and didn't give up. Look at this. I think anyone that Zentangles does such fantastic work. I've only done a little bit of it and I do love it. It's very um, soothing, I guess you could say. Hey, cat. Anyone else that I've missed? Welcome, welcome. So this one here, very clever. She put these little brads in so you can, her arms and legs. And this is from Linda Green. And look at that. Oh, like that, the imagination, like, wow. These are so fantastic. I love them. And the work that she does in them, the shading, and she put some little rhinestones in there. It's awesome. Thank you very much. And then I. Janet gave me one of these. I was so excited. I love these little matchbook um, holders for... These are so great. And look at that. She even did K.A. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm going to actually put that in my um, journal. And then look at these. The work is fantastic. You guys did such a fantastic job. This was from Carol CB, known on YouTube. Like these are fantastic. Look at the work in these and the little magnifying glass. Look at that. That is such a cool idea. Love it. That one was, that's Janet's, and the colored ones. I love seeing the colored ones too. Look at that work. That one is from Darla Kay. You guys did a great job. 
And that was from Angela R. Hicks, I think. And then this one's got some, uh, looks like gel pen of some sort. And it's a little bit sparkly. Or it could be, um, it's shiny. I like that. And that was from Johnson. J.L. Johnson. Thank you so much. I love it. And I'm going to make a pocket in my um, file folder art journal and put this in there. And then I also got one from Lena. This is cool. Where she did the actual face and then you got a part of it. Isn't that cool? Thank you so much, Lena. Love it. So these are going to look great in my file folder. Uh, Janice Johnson. Okay. A scratch off one? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're probably right. That's so cool. Uh, like there, you guys have a fantastic imagination. Just saying. So I hope you got um, a lot of inspiration from these and encouragement by doing them. And I hope you'll continue your journey with doing art and being imaginative. I think that's so fantastic. You guys did great. And thanks so much, um, Janet, for hosting that. I know it's a lot of work, but it was so fun. I'll put those to the side. And then, okay, so what I'm going to do here is this, these are, <laughs> I think you guys remember this. This was uh, done in uh, December, I believe, or New Year's, oh, two, three years ago maybe, where we made this um, folder. And it can turn into, there's a little pocket here, it can turn into the cover of a book. So you can make your own journal out of this. And this is uh, just Lindy's sprays and I believe there's some dilution sprays in here. Stencils. And that's pretty much it. And I just sprayed over top of each other both sides. So it was a large piece of watercolor paper. And then we folded it. And there is a video for this. Uh, I'll see if I can find it and I'll link it down below or I'll put it up in the corner here as a card when I'm done. So I have this one. I haven't, haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. And then I just put one of these uh, grommets or whatever you call them in. And then this is just stretchy cord. And then you can just double it. And this is where I got it from, this idea. And I did this one, oh gosh, I don't even know if I dated it. Yes, 2014. <laughs> so this was the other one that I did. And this was done the same way. So both sides of the watercolor paper was sprayed, stencils, and sprays. I put a little bit of um, pocket in the back here, 
actually what I did was I did it upside down. <laughs> so take a look inside before you glue pockets in. <laughs> Just saying. But I left it. It's okay. <laughs> I always do that. Even in my books. I'll draw a picture in one of my journals and later on I'll find it's upside down. Every journal has to have an upside down page. Um, so I had to <laughs> do this one too. Now this, this can be done. So I just have this little pocket here for storing little bits and pieces of papers. This was a face that I did mm, 10 years ago or so. And I copied it on my printer, printed it out in different sizes. And this way I can reuse this for whatever um, mixed media or maybe I'm, I'm wanting a journal page with some writing on it. Um, this was done with some magazines uh, and also scrapbook paper. There's the face that I did and I just cut it out, glued it on and then added a little bit of uh, colored pencil I believe. And then this here, yeah it's not coming up. Some, some of them I used a little bit of, uh, yeah, right here. This green is a little bit of pan pastel. And just brightens it up a little bit, a little bit of pen. So you can multi-layer. This would be considered mixed media. So multi-layer, put some different types of medium on. One page must be... Oh, yeah, I agree with that. It's a rule. <laughs> Sounds good, Janet. <laughs> this one it has a little bit of uh, thicker paint for a little bit of texture on it. So you reuse your drawings or paintings that you do and cut them out. Put them in another page in a different way. Add some paint to it and it's done. So as you can see, I haven't even use this. I've got to use this up. Like, what a waste. <laughs> but I'm that type of person that has to finish a journal before I start one. And I just never... I think this was a class I was taking with um, Pam Carricker. And I didn't uh, finish the class in this book. It's in another book. It's a cute, inexpensive way to make a book for your journals. Um, I use the uh, just signatures sewn into the side here, and this is just uh, a heavy uh, crochet thread that I used for doing that. So, and you can make them any size. That's the nice thing about these. Um, and you can get ready-made books. So, this is a Dilusions uh, work journal book. And the reason why I like these are because of the paper. And if uh, you've been with me for any length of time, you've probably seen my file folders that I use for journals. And I'll show you one of those in a minute. And the reason why I got on to that was because a lot of the paper in these, um, this is probably one of the first ones that came out. They're, half of it was watercolor and half of it was... Uh, journal paper. So this, or not journal paper, uh, watercolor in a manila. And it's very, very thick. Same as a, a file folder. And these are great for using as mixed media, drawing on. Um, I paint on mine also. Uh, 
you can do watercolor on them too, but it's more of a line and wash that you'd be able to do because it won't soak in. And they don't ripple or buckle like uh, I find a lot of mixed media papers tend to buckle a little more than um, this one does. And it has a nice sturdy cover. And it pretty well lays mm, fairly flat. But this one here, I've done everything in it. So I've done some writing, I've done sprays, I've done collage, colored pencil, stamping, um, pen work. This is pen work. Uh, acrylic paint over Lindy's. This is acrylic paint. Um, stenciling and colored pencil. You can glue things in it. Um, stamping. This is collage and acrylic paint with a bit of uh, pen work. Colored pencil on scrapbook paper, some collage, some paint on the collage. A drawing of my granddaughter, colored pencil and um, acrylic paint, napkins and stenciling, stenciling. Um, these are napkins and then a little bit of paint for the face and the bird. Some glitter I put in it over top of uh, scrapbook paper, some acrylic paint. So you can use, this is why I love this, because I like to add lots of layers. I don't know about you guys, I like to add layers. So we have dimensional stuff, paint, these are uh, napkins, This is uh, acrylic painting. This is a mixture of acrylic paint and pan pastels and a pen work. This is an actual piece of napkin made into a um, piece of clothing. Acrylic paint. Um, here's a mix of acrylic paint and flowers. So these flowers are some of them are from um, napkins and some are from, these ones up here are from a catalog, like a flower catalog. A little bit of writing, some colored pencil over top of acrylic paint. Napkins and pencil crayon, acrylic paint and then just a piece of napkin over top of the whole thing. So basically no um, drawing. This is all a napkin. A little bit of... I believe this one was um, Neo 2's and then also a little bit of pen work. Acrylic paint. Oh, thanks. Tori. Hey, Lori. Um, most of this, if I used uh, an artist grade acrylic paint, I put a, a coat of matte medium over top so it won't stick. You have to do that. You can't leave it if you use acrylic paint artist grade because it'll stick together. Um, if you're using the craft paint, you don't have to worry about it. This was fun. Uh, this was cut with a rotary cutter and it was, uh, I think it was a butterfly picture with flowers. And what I did is I had six, um, the dollar store, if you can go well, they're probably on sale now. Um, you can get them for a buck each. 
and I bought six and I take the same picture from all six and cut it so that I can piece them together into triangles. This is kind of um, quilters type of paint or, or technique. And then you can make these kaleidoscope type of, of uh, work in it. Now this would be cool with something painted on it. I never did finish it, but I've really enjoyed cutting those out. We, we'll probably do another one of those. Uh, Neo 2's, Neo 2's, and a little bit of tissue paper that's been printed on. Magazine images and incorporating them into your subject matter. So this here and parts of the rock was from a magazine and this up here and I made that into his hair. coloring book page, add a little bit of stenciling to it. Same with this color book page. Set stenciling and watercolor. Um, these are drawings I did and then I photocopied them and glued them onto my collage backgrounds. I like doing this type of... so you have the black and white of the drawing and then you have your colored background. So as you can see, I've done everything. This is where I do my ideas, where I try things out. So it's a safe place. So if you're just starting out, I know a lot of people um, have a problem getting something down on that white page. And if you can get it in your head that this is a safe place, nobody has to see this, you don't have to rip it out of your book, leave it in the book. Even if it's the worst painting you've ever done, leave it in your book because you can learn from that page. This is all basically a classroom in a book. So think of it that way and it might help you do more in your um, sketchbooks and not make them so precious. Uh, another, this is a copy of one of my drawings. This was a drawing I did. I thought it would kind of look cool, just keep it in the black and white. Some psychedelic, <laughs> my thoughts in this one is she's got a headache. And I've got this arm coming out of this psychedelic background, squeezing the back of her head. That's how she felt. So, so confused and uh, in pain. And then the time, you know, when you're really in a lot of pain and a headache, you're always thinking, oh, how long is this going to last? And that's how I portrayed it onto this paper. Uh, napkins and this was from a coloring page. Napkins, stenciling, color page, a drawing of my bunny, just uh, incorporating it. A class I did from uh, Peony and Parakeet called. She has some really interesting classes. I really like her. She's from the Netherlands. Some scribble about the class. Some more drawings and backgrounds. The bunny. This is a. The cups were from a coloring book. The bunny I put in the cup, and these are um, stencils that I used. And then I 
shaded parts of the stencil and highlighted so it made it look like it's popping out. Uh, this was, <laughs> we did this on a Ustream, um, so it was collage, basically, and a little bit of uh, stenciling, and we put this all together for a Halloween picture. This was a part of a napkin and some paint, did the face, collage, paint, drawing. That was collage. Different things together and then uh, painting in. Now see this was done. Here's um, learn by my mistake. So this was done with acrylic paint artist grade. I did not put enough of a medium matte medium over top and that's what happens. Is you lift the paint. But I didn't tear it out. I'm leaving it because it's a reminder. More uh, bits of napkin, a tree I drew, little birds. Mm, that was a use stream too, I think. Painting collage and paint again. See? Some more painting. A little bit of notes for what I was doing. Now I put this on here because this here is actually um, oil pastel. So I didn't want it to go on there so I just put a piece of um, deli wrap in between. birds. This was, uh, we did this on YouTube. A bunch of us got together and we did this as a class type of thing. That was fun. Some collage and some acrylic paint. Drawing my granddaughter. And this was a bit of collage, and then I painted the, oh, I think this was a paint over, actually. Yeah, I think it was. This was a paint over, so this face, I painted over and made it into something else. Same with this, it was a paint over. And then I put the a veil on her. <laughs> And my squished fairies. This was a member's stream. And this was something I was just playing with. So there's a lot of texture on here. So it's an envelope and then there's um, a gel medium that was colored so it made it look transparent. So, and then I put a fish collage in it <laughs> and like I was somebody that I'd seen on Pinterest an artist so I thought I'd give it a try very textured uh, that was a class we did um, this was a Ustream or not Ustream um, YouTube Art Nouveau um, these were pre-streams for members, so I had to do, um, show how to do certain things. It wasn't finished. Um, this is Pan Pastel. Or no, this is, uh, yeah, this is oil pastel that I put, um, I think I put Durlin's wax on that. Lena had told me about Durlin's wax and it did work. Stopped it from uh, transferring so that's good. 
This is a member's uh, paint along. This is something I just did. Um, something I was trying out. That was a uh, YouTube. This was Mary's, one of Mary's streams I did. And I just have a few papers to do. And I'm done that. So, as you can see, there's many, many, many things you can put in a art journal. Would you consider this an art journal or a sketchbook? Um, let's see. Okay, so we also have this type of uh, the composition books. Now, for me, I consider these the same as the other. It's just a different format. It's different paper, but I'm doing the same thing in it. You'd say art journal? So this one's got everything in it. Different classes that I took. Thoughts, what I did, I glued pieces of paper in them. Um, some of them are glued together to pages, some aren't. This was just tr like I've got some, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, I can't think of it. Resin on here. Scrapbook paper. This has got different types of, of um, rice papers and then um, scrapbook paper. Hi Brenda! This was all acrylics, but it worked on this too. So don't, if you haven't got a sketchbook um, per se, an art journal, Get a composition book. If you're going to do a lot of wet work, then yes, I would glue two pages together. Um, the only thing I would recommend though, when you glue two pages together, I would use matte medium. I did do a book that was glued together with uh, YooHoo glue sticks, and as soon as I put any kind of wet material in it, they separated. So use a, ma um, a matte medium in between. You can just use a credit card or one of these and just scrape it on so it's very thin. But then you won't have any problems with the pages separating. I don't know if any of uh, you had that problem, but that's what I seem to have a problem with. This one here was from Prompts. Uh, what was it called? Journal 52, it was called. I don't know if she still does it. She did have um, a Facebook page where she would give prompts out for the month. And then you could do um, the prompts in a journal style page. And that's what I did for this. And that's what these all these sayings are. Um, up, up, and away. Somewhere, a simple place. Things to make me smile, uh, building character, what was this one, I think this was just abstract, letters of love, uh, when I grow up. This one was color swatch. So these are color swatches. This one was found poetry. So when you cut words out of a book and then glue them in a way that it makes it your own poetry. That was fun. 
This way you can get your imagination going also. I don't know if any of you did that. Mental health art for a cause, it was called. I wish upon a star tonight. Yes, mine separates with glue. Yeah, yours did too? Okay. Um, this one was life in a day of me. So things I did in my day. Gathering. Well, this stops right here. This is when I started doing a bit of acrylic paint and this was a stencil that I put over top with some, uh, what was it called? Uh, don't think it was matte medium. Might have been a thick gesso that I put over top. Here's mixing um, different colors, so blue, green, and white. Uh, blue, white, and burnt sienna, purple, brown, sienna, white, mixings for skin tones. So I have this whole page. It was just trying out different colors to make skin tones in acrylics. Swatches. Uh, one of the classes I took for uh, Jerry Arnell. So making bark so that it's actually textured. Snow. See, and I, I just write right over top because it's it's something I learned from and I wanted to put down uh, different things about that particular class I wanted to remember. Then I started doing these um, uh, low color pages of portraits with an expression. I wanted to try different expressions. So they might have a different meaning to you, but this directions. So I'd, I'd actually cut out pieces of writing from magazines and put them in the background with um, stamped tissue paper. And then I would white it out a little bit with um, a gesso or a zinc white if you have it and then do my drawing over top and then just with either a little bit of color or this happens to be uh, a napkin I believe that I put as the collar of his shirt so I just wanted a touch of color not much and letters or numbers or something to put in um, stamping areas, all monochrome type of thing. Hey Kim, thanks. Yeah, I want to get back into these. These were fun and I believe I used shading gray. <laughs> I remember when I brought that out. You guys all had to go get some. Golden's uh, High flow shading gray is what I used for uh, doing the face because you can add more color on top of the existing color. Um, a girl looking through a window and says, Wait, and then I found these letters. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Time slipping through your hand. So that's what I drew. This is a perspective foreshortened. You have to use your books to learn things, to challenge yourself. Don't be scared to do it in your journal or sketchbook. That's where you learn things. So these guys don't have any color, but see just a dab of red on her nails? That was it. Late night. Looks like she was mischievous.
this was like she's saying really <laughs> just that look what does that story what should the story be for this look that's what I like doing I find a lot of um, paintings or could be in your art journal to make it really interesting it has to have a story it has to well, whoever's looking at that should be able to say oh I wonder what happened to him why is his face like that or this it has to have a story if it doesn't people just quickly turn the page same with painting it has to have a story for that person to stand there and look at it with interest because they're figuring something out. Uh, deaths I had. <laughs> she doesn't have any. She's the queen. Everybody pays it for her. <laughs> uh, kiss goodbye. Again, just a bit of color. Uh, this just has a smidgen of purple in the background. So it was December 20th, so just snow falling. She's looking up. Uh, I can't pay my... It looks like she's worried. And I like having your paintings your, to see through it. So I'm doing the background first and doing the portrait over top. But you can still see the tissue paper that's been printed and then glued on behind it. But that's fine. I love that look. This one, you can really see it. Um, <laughs> strobe, moon, sleep. That's what he's thinking. He's tired. But see, you can still see the tissue paper through his face, but I'm going to leave it that way. And then there's just a bit of color. Oh, thanks, Brenda. This was just experimenting. You, that's how you get your ideas, by doing, by writing things down. If you got an idea while you're watching a show or a movie or maybe you saw something on Pinterest or another channel and it gave you an idea of something you want to try but you're not copying what they did it's part of what you're going to do so it gives you ideas to experiment in your own way this was fun <laughs> I actually used uh, gauze to wrap his face with <laughs> so he was a mummy and he woke up <laughs> so that was for Halloween so that's just a plain old composition book and it didn't come apart um, this one was made in China it was bought here in Canada so yeah use scrap use whatever you have just get a sketchbook going so you can do some creative ideas and drawing or whatever it is don't limit yourself on your creativity because you don't think you have the right paper try it first with whatever you have experiment <laughs> but they're fun Lori I love experimenting they're fun and that's how you learn and that's how you become better in what you're doing. Um, this was a book booklet that I got from um, Tisha Moore many, many, many years ago. And you used to be able to, I don't know, I haven't been to her website in years. I don't know if she still has it. I know she had a stroke and was um, very sick. But she had these small little magazines of her actual journals. So this is a great way. If you don't want to draw or maybe you just want to um, cut and paste, 
with a little bit of color. Her work is a great way to get started in this. So as you can see, she writes about her day. Sometimes it doesn't look like it makes sense, any of her um, collage, or it might look really goofy, or but it's colorful, it's bright, it's happy. She has different um, styles that you can say, that's yeah, a Tisha Moore. Um, but this is another thing to look at. Look through different magazines, and if you stop at a page and you're saying, I really love that, analyze it. Why do you love it? Is it the color? Is it the composition of the page? Is it the style, the idea, the imagination? And then tear that page out wherever you're, or take a photocopy of it or a picture of it and put it in your journal, and then write about it. I love this page because, and that will help you out when you start to go back into your journals, and you will go back in your journals to take a look at what you've been doing. And it might spark some more creativity in you in later years, something you forgot. Yeah, I love her style, I've always, admired um, her imaginative uh, way she puts things together. And I, I want to get into this too. Well, geez, I, I, I've got so much I want to do. It's not enough time. But I do have a, um, a daily journal, I guess you'd call it, where I do a lot of collage and then write about my day. And it's kind of like this style, not as, um, uh, there's not as much on a page. There might be just one figure and then I'm mostly writing with a colored background. But I want to start doing more of these creatures and these little <laughs> ladies and the funny hairdos and stuff. I love them. I think they're so cool. So that's another idea. Don't be, don't limit yourself when it comes to your sketchbook. Try, this is where you try things. Um, this one is just a plain old Michaels sketchbook. Now I know most of you have seen this, so I won't um, go through it all, but again, this was a mix of stuff that I've learned, um, a bunch of drawings, this was from a sketch a day that we did on Twitter <laughs> with Janet and Eileen and there was a bunch of us and we would give, I think it was by the week, we'd give seven either sentences or topics or a word and we would have to draw a picture and there wasn't really a specific medium that you had to use, you could do whatever you want. And I picked pen and ink. And so there was many, many types of different and like they're all they're all um some are, are better than others, but it's your sketchbook again. Play in your sketchbook. Have some fun, try things. You learn how to use ink and watercolor, um, graphite pencil, and then this is the book I'm using for my nature journal too, but I didn't start a new one. I'm using the same one. Hey Julie! So I have Primulas and Hyacinths and Forsythia, and these are all on um, YouTube. They're all um, live streamed. So if you're interested in ink and watercolor or ink and wash, you can check those out. It's very relaxing. 
It's very um, simple. It's not multi-layered. It's uh, more washes than than layer upon layer. That was the last one we did of the um, field of lavender. So still a few left to do and then we'll be done that book. And I always date my, always date your paintings. Doesn't matter if it was a disaster or really good, date them because you're going to want to know. That's the only rule I have with your sketchbook. It's <laughs> date your stuff. Um, now, I pulled out a few books just to give you a little idea also of there's many types of um, artists out there with um, journaling ideas, journaling styles, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one is a nature journaler and I love her work. She's from the UK and this is, I believe, her first book. It just came out this year. But she has a very unique style. She's more, um, I would say, botanical, illustrative style, not too loose. A lot of pen work. Um, but this is done, this book was printed in the style that she has. So it's like looking at her exact um, book, sketchbook. And she did all hers in like a composition book. So you can still see the lines in her book. I love this to get people's ideas on how they did their books. So this is a beautiful book. And she used a pencil crayon and watercolor and ink. But she has some beautiful illustrations here. And she has, you know, um, it's a little more um, neater than some um, natural what do you call them? Nature journaler. I like this. This is what reminded me of um, Janet when she did that on her uh, Zentangle. So here's the bug and then she made a magnified um, drawing of the center of it. I think that's such a clever thing to do. You could do that separately too. Put it on a separate piece of paper and then put it on top. She's more about bugs and birds in this one. And talks about them. But it's a beautiful book. So you don't have to have a blank book. You can use your composition books and do this type of work. great reference book if you want to get um, ideas on composition, how to let, put your writing down in it. Hey Lisa, Julie, good to see you. So it's a beautiful book. She has the dates, the sun, that type of thing. And I think you can get all those little pictures now in, in um, stamps and stencils for this type of work. Bees. This is a beautiful book. And it wasn't done um, every single day. That's the thing. See, here's um, 
9-6-2019, then that's 15-6-2019. Um, so it's whenever she saw something. It doesn't have to be every single day. So, you know, it's nice if you can do it every single day, but don't force yourself. If you don't feel like doing it, this type of work, don't do it. You don't want to make your creative process a chore. This is the type of work you like? Yeah, I love this type of work. I'm, I love detail, so this really appealed to me. I love loose looking watercolor. And that's something I have to work on, is um, a loose style. I really do love that style in certain formats. But as far as like a nature journal, this is the, this is the type of thing I like. See, I, I even like the way she did this arrow. There's that it's a speech bubble, but you could do a magnifying like Janet did. That would be cool. A lot of this uh, is water, or not watercolor, uh, colored pencil too. So use both. Yeah, these are more about bugs. And then she has your own, you do your own in the back here if you wanted to. Or you could copy these formats and, and make your own um, book. It's a beautiful book. So there's that one. And then this is another type. Uh, collage journals. So this is using um, ephemera, collage, a little bit of watercolor, colored pencil, fabric, and she's made her own type of collage to do her daily journaling in. So she's only put um, collage or, or drawing in certain areas so she gives herself enough room to do her journaling around. And I love this idea. So she um, made deckled edges on her books. Stamping wallpapers even, um, stamps, maps, old ribbons, whatever. This is an everything book. <laughs> like, she drew this. This looks like it's a napkin of some sort. And then she put a leopard on top of it by collaging over top of the napkin. She looks like watercolor paper in here. And she's colored some of the wa watercolor beforehand, and then as she goes, she does her drawings or paintings or collage, whatever she's going to do for that page. A lot of writing. You don't have to do a lot of writing, but this would be a great travel. Uh, journal. I just like the fact that there is this uh, bit of collage, a bit of color, and then it's not too dark that you can still write on top of it. And she gives uh, techniques in this book also. This is a food and wine journal. 
So she used an old um, ledger of some sort. This is uh, the type of journaling I really love as far as a, a diary type of thing, if you want to call it that. Some place where you'll, you can write things down more more about writing your about your experience or a special time of day or you know that type of thing so when you're putting in your thoughts or feelings I consider those more diaries and when I'm experimenting with material or paint or whatever or ideas that's when I consider that a sketchbook or a journal, art journal. This is a really nice book if you want to get some ideas on how to put things together or different things to collect. Um, this is more about um, not necessarily um, junk journaling. It's more junk journaling to me is stuff that you would throw out and you keep it to make a book. This is more about um, collecting things for a specific reason. Like this page here, she collected a rose seeds, um, ephemera that would go with that page. Junk journaling is whatever. There's no specific rhyme or reason for what you've collected. So it all depends on how you like to journal. So that's a, another really good book. Um, of course there's Daphne's Diary. And I like this book as eye candy myself. There's some nice uh, um, articles in it, but for me, I like looking at the composition and the layout <laughs> of things. That's just uh, the way I work. Like, if you were going to do your own diary type page, this will give you some really great ideas. So they've mixed in actual photographs. Some are individual like there's nothing behind them and then actual photograph but also put drawings over top of things and it's how they layer things that I like the, a lot of watercolor and photography put together so wash and sketch and you can also look at the layout because layout can really add a lot to your journaling too so um, where do they put your focal image as far as pictures or drawings and how do they place the uh, topography or or um, it's not the same on every page because if it was it would be boring So large area and top and bottom and then in the center is the type. Whereas this one it's corners. Like pay attention to that because that will help you in composition with a lot of your stuff. So these are a really great way of um, getting ideas. 
And then the last one I have here is, this is brand new, it just came out. And I think you probably remember the other one that she had, which was, I don't know if she put it in here. Draw Your Day, I think it was called. Yeah, this is Draw Your World. The other one was called Draw Your Day. And this one's a little more detailed on what she actually does. So if you like the other one, you'll probably really enjoy this one. So this is, gives you the basics about the, you know, the things you need for your, if you're going to take this on the road with you. And then, um, then it starts uh, giving you some short things on drawing, can, continuous drawing lines, that type of thing. A little lesson on, on different things, lights, light and shadows, um, perspective, uh, and what's interesting as far as uh, the viewer, when a viewer is looking at something. So, um, one point perspective when drawing buildings or that type of thing. And then placement again. How do you place your things? So composition. Um, lettering. Where, where to put it. Um, color. So this is a little more of an exercise book if you're tall interested in composition and that type of thing. It's just a quick, it's, it's not in, too in depth, but it'll help with, um, if you like urban sketching, that type of thing. And it'll give you some ideas. Now, urban sketching is a totally different thing again. Uh, I have signed up for a sketchbook course that Hillard Beatty started in October. Hope that I will make it will make me keep one up. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. Uh, you just um, I for me, and I know a lot of people feel this way is if it's a chore then you need to find a different way of doing it. If it's something you're really passionate about, don't make it a chore because you'll lose that passion. That's why a lot of artists that uh, are very, very talented, very um, imaginative as soon as they tend to start doing um, work for a company or um, even their own personal, they have to find the right um, balance of how, how much work you do for a customer versus yourself. Because as soon as you start using up all your time and creativity on what you're commissioned to do. And a lot of times artists um, fall in the trap of doing a painting or whatever for somebody and that person is telling them what they want on that painting. That's when it just goes right out the window and you lose your whole creative ability because you're now working for them and what they consider creative. Don't do that. Keep your own creativity. If they love your work, they will let you create from what you want. So my biggest um, 
tip is just get a book, doesn't matter what kind of book it is, whatever you have on hand, don't feel that you have to go and buy anything special, and start drawing. Even if you can't draw, or you feel you can't draw, everyone can. It's just a matter of sitting yourself down and trying. It may not be what you want it to be for a good while, but as long as you keep trying and doing um, small sketches, don't try doing your mother or your brother or kids, you'll be disappointed. You need to do something. Start off small and simple. Start by doing what's in your fridge, what's in your drawer, what's in your purse, uh, what's right in front of you right now, and draw it. It doesn't have to be um, an amazing topic. Just start drawing and start by looking at the shapes first. And if this interests you, you'll know that you're going to want to do more. And that's when you should start getting um, maybe some more books. Um, Go to the sketchbook school is a really good one if you're interested in drawing. Just uh, don't don't set yourself for um, for failure by um, making this huge goal for you to be this amazing um, portrait artist by the end of the year because it takes a long time. Some people are quicker than others. It's like anything else. Some people can sing. Fantastic, and others can't. You got to find out how much practice you need to get to what you want to do. So I think that's it for today. And I know I didn't do anything, but I wanted to talk about this because I, I find a lot of people are making too big of a um, deal about their books and being so precious and. Um, wanting to make this perfect paintings and drawings, you, you can't. You just make this your place, your your safe place to be creative. Well, that's great, Brenda. So just keep it to yourself. You don't have to show anybody. And just keep being creative. That's all you need. Enjoy the journey of being creative. Don't rush and don't do it to get to that finish point. You got to enjoy the journey. Enjoy what you're doing. And that's when you'll find a very, you'll get into that zone of calm and stressless ability and then you look up on the clock and all of a sudden three hours have gone by and you don't know when just like just like that it flew by you're in the zone and that's by just enjoying the process that's how you get in the zone is enjoy what you're doing so I'm gonna let you guys go now anyone that is in the membership um, you're video for um, Blooming Artist will be um, a live stream and it'll be on Saturday at 1 o'clock this Saturday and the Budding Artist will be on Monday and you'll have a video coming up and make sure you look in the membership community tab on my um, channel page and you'll see the links. Uh, awesome, Brenda. Yep, just keep it up. All right, so I'll let you guys go and uh, just get out there, be creative, and enjoy the process. Talk to you guys later.